I'm starting to believe that Jason coming back is actually just a myth. <laughs> I'm sure it's like the next episode or the last episode of this three-parter. It's I just want Jason. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Britt, and if you haven't subscribed yet, you probably should because I talk about geeky things, and today uh, we're going to be talking about Power Rangers Beast Morphers. Uh, this one is called Finders Keepers. So anybody who's seen Power Rangers knows what that means. The Dino Charge Rangers. Not Jason. If you guys want to skip the full episode recap, you guys can click this timestamp right here, look at the chapters below, or go down below where you'll see the timestamps down there in the description as well. So let's just get on to it. So this episode opens with the Power Rangers searching for Ryjack's ship. Obviously, since last episode we defeated Ryjack, so now they're looking for his ship because his ship is filled with Power Ranger relics that have been stolen uh, over time and universes. Because <laughs> Dino Charge. Zoe ends up finding the ship and she lets everybody know, but on the radar they're seeing something coming at her quickly. So Zoe decides that she has no time to wait for the other rangers as she goes into the ship, setting off the alarm system, which immediately <laughs> blows up the ship, uh, with Zoe still inside. Blaze and Roxy are sent to the wreckage to be able to collect the same items that Zoe and the rangers are looking for. They are able to find one particular sword and use Ryjack's uh, thing that he used to bring back uh, Vargoyle to bring back Snide from Dino Charge. <laughs> Clearly, because the movie that they're using for Sentai footage, that is the only place that that character actually exists. Anyway, I digress. They leave with Snide and Zoe wakes up and uh, finds the intruder that was coming after her and uh, it happens to be Keeper. You know, the mentor from Dino Charge. Not knowing who Keeper is, or even seeing his face, she picks up one of the compliance collars and throws it at him, and it hits him, and now he is compliant. At this point, the others arrive, they're looking through some of the wreckage, they find Lord Zed's uh, staff, they find some other things, things belonging to Sledge and other members of uh, evil people from dinosaur-themed Ranger seasons. They put Keeper into the truck uh, and then didn't realize that a Vivix was in the driver's seat and drives off with Keeper on their way to Evox. So the Rangers are kind of freaking out, clearly. The three original Power Rangers from this season go to chase the van that Keeper is in, the truck that Keeper is in, uh, to try and save Keeper, while Nate and Steel are focused on trying to get these relics back to the base. The Dino Charge Rangers come through the portal to help in this time of need to save their mentor. Well, at least the four that we see unmorphed, not all of them. We'll get to Shelby and Riley later. And then I don't, the other ones didn't appear, so. 10 rangers in a season and only six of them appear because it's the core six rangers. Anyway, you guys get it. Keeper is eventually brought to Evox and Zoe obviously feels very bad about this because it is her fault because he has the compliance collar on. So obviously it's, it's her fault that this is all happening. The rangers return to the base with the uh, relics. They're kind of looking through them. Um, and the Dino Charge Rangers obviously tell them that they need to get Keeper back, that that needs to be their number one priority. Obviously, with Keeper being a Power Ranger mentor, he holds a lot of secrets about the Power Rangers, and they don't need Evox knowing these things. At the same time, Evox is asking Keeper for this information, and because <laughs> Keeper has a compliance collar on, he does, so that's great. Snide comes with a plan to get the relics away from the rangers as well as keep Keeper, which is of course to trick the rangers into meeting with them so that they can exchange Keeper for the relics. So Evox connects with the rangers and tells them of this, that he wants the relics and they will give them, and he will give them back Keeper, uh, and the rangers fall for it, and they go to meet Evox to uh, give them <laughs> all of these relics, which sounds like a great idea. Scrozzle ends up taking the weapons, taking those relics away, and they keep Keeper, so who saw that coming? 
I mean, they, they let us know, really. So a fight breaks out over Keeper, and that is when Shelby and Riley finally join the fight, completely suited up, because we all know how those actors feel about this community. So it is also then when a Giga drone attacks the city. So the Rangers go off to fight the Giga drone uh, in order to uh, stop it from destroying the city. This was actually kind of a more involved Giga drone fight where the Giga drone was using a magnet to pull uh, Morphex out of a tower. So it was kind of a more involved fight, and we'll get to that in a little bit. And they eventually destroy the Giga drone. And the Dino Charge Rangers are fighting Snide. They are able to get Keeper back. The other Rangers join again after the Giga Drone has been destroyed. Um, and the other Rangers at that point join and they get Keeper back. In the final scene of this episode, the Dino Charge Rangers are actually heading back to their universe, as well as Keeper um, is going off someplace else, not through the portal. So he's staying in this universe, because obviously we still have two episodes left in this particular like story. So obviously the Dino Charge Rangers are coming back. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of how it all ends. Uh, the Dino Charge Rangers says, hey, there's still enemies out there, so it's not quite a victory but at least it's a victory for today so there we go that's how it ends so now my thoughts despite some executional issues with this particular story i feel like this particular story was actually pretty good um i liked the uh mistake in identity storyline essentially that that they had that the rangers had with keeper initially i liked that um i liked that keeper got kidnapped because that adds a little bit of, of tenseness, it adds a little bit of, of drama to what's going on to actually have the mentor kidnapped instead of just like having no real reason for this fight to be happening. Um, and that tends to be a thing with, Rain with the Power Rangers, it's like, well, there's just this villain. What else do you need? So it is nice to have a little bit of depth added, and I think Keeper having been kidnapped was definitely... Um, a valid reason to fight. I did like that the Giga Drone fight was a little bit more involved. I I like that. I have always liked that because I especially with Beast Morphers, it feels like they just jump into their Zords and then they just destroy the Giga Drone and the episode is over. It's like the majority of the episode is either based on their civilian story or based on the initial monster um, and all that stuff. So it's. It's just, I don't know, it, it it feels good when they actually utilize the Zords a little bit better because I feel like the Zords are kind of underutilized or utilized improperly. So it's nice to see a more in-depth story when it comes to the actual Zord fight. There was no Ben and Betty. <laughs> What's funny is I didn't actually notice it until I was writing down my notes and I was like, oh my God, there was no Ben and Betty in this episode. I love that for us. Let's just keep having that. Now for the things that I just wasn't super into. Uh, like I kind of said when I talked about the story, there were some pretty serious executional issues with this particular story. Um, number one, the compliance caller. I feel like that was such an easy way out. That was such a convenient thing. So my normal argument about convenience writing in Power Rangers, it is just flooded throughout, saturated. <laughs> in Neo Saban. I mean, it's definitely in original Saban and it's also definitely in Disney seasons as well. But I feel like the Neo Saban team just always goes for the, so how do we make this work? Yeah, who cares? Uh, more often than any other era of Power Rangers. So it, it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating is what it is. Uh, but I feel like the compliance collar is just such a convenient thing where, you know, like Zoe puts the convenience collar on, but somehow it also works for Evox and also works for Snide, also works for like everybody essentially. I feel like that's such a powerful thing that like there's no way to really beat it. And then if that were the case, then episodes ago when Vargoyle had the compliance collared on, they could have simply just been like, hey Vargoyle, why don't you stop fighting? Why don't you become a good guy? And then Vargoyle would be like, okay. You know, I mean, I just, I feel like there could have been such 
a better way to have the kidnapping story take place. I feel like it was just so easy and so convenient that it was like, well, let's just use a compliance collar because if he's not got the comp compliance collar on, he'll just listen to Joe Schmo on the street. Yeah, but <sighs> is that always a good thing? That's that's my question. Is is that always a good thing? The answer is no. It's not always a good thing. <laughs> Um, the end. Didn't like it. Um, and, and the only reason for that is, <laughs> so you end this episode with Snide and Sledge, Sledge's entire team, all still alive, and the Dino Charge Rangers are like, peace. We got other things to do. No, <laughs> like, it's no, it's not, it's not okay. Um, but yeah, so the end, I wasn't thrilled with how they wrote them out of the episode, uh, because I'm just like, but that's not what Tyler would have done. Tyler would have been like, we gotta defeat them again. We gotta stay here until they're defeated again. But Judd Lynn's never been able to stick to Tyler's character, even a little bit, so. Uh, that's some season two shade. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then there's Shelby and Riley. Now I get it. Obviously, we touched on a little bit before. The actors really want nothing to do with this community. The actors really want nothing to do with the characters. Uh, so I get it. They didn't want to come all the way to New Zealand to be in this episode. Like, it's fine. I'm not going to be like, how dare they? Like, no, it's... It is what it is. Um... Maybe someday they'll come around and they'll enjoy the community. Uh, they'll enjoy the fandom, but today is not that day. And this episode was not that episode. However, I feel like the way that it just was kind of written was whew, very weak because it's like, they come in through the portal, fine, that's fine. How they come in is fine. You know, they're waiting for the signal, come if we need help, that's, fine. Like, that doesn't bother me even in the slightest. It was the fact that they were not actually written out of the episode. So when the rangers were done fighting and they were all, they're like, let's head back to the base. It was like all of them were going to head back to the base and then we get back to the base and it's just those four again. So there was no like, well, Shelby Riley, you guys should probably head back, you know, because you guys got to go feed the Tyrannosaurus Rex, right? Like, they could have done that. Like, they could have been like, hey, go do the thing. Go jump through the portal and go do the thing. But they didn't actively <laughs> write them out of the episode. So they're there, and then they're not. Ugh, so bad. It's just... <sighs> Judd. Lynn, Judd Lynn. Can we have a conversation, you and me? Seriously, let's do it. Zoom, you and me, have a little conversation about how to do your job better. Uh, now I get it, Simon's taking over next year. That's great, Simon Bennett. I have all the hope in all the world that you are going to be a better showrunner <laughs> than Judd Lynn. Um, however, do not make these same mistakes because this just drives me bonkers. As somebody who spent four years, has a freaking college degree in making movies and film criticism. Uh, I just can't handle poor storytelling and that's poor storytelling. So yeah, overall this episode was fine. Uh, regardless of the fact that there was no Jason, it would have been great. You know, I would have had a much, I wouldn't have cared about any of the executional issues if I at least got to see, see Jason. That's not true. I would have been probably more upset about the executional issues because I want Jason to be in something good. So I'm hoping whenever Jason does show up, if Jason's actually showing up, or maybe I just dreamed it all, um, <laughs> maybe he'll be better. Maybe he'll make the episode better. Maybe, maybe the episodes won't be this bad. But like I said, the overall story was great, but a lot of other aspects to it which are also incredibly important not so great 
So that's how I felt about this episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers uh, Finders Keepers. So let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of this episode. Did you guys like it? Did you guys not like it? Do you guys even care whenever I get nitpicky, nitpicky about executional issues? Even though I don't feel like this is nitpicking, I feel like this is actual like legitimate like bad storytelling. But let me know in the comments below what you guys thought. If you guys can overlook those things or if you guys agree with me, let me know in the comments below. Anything you want you want to tell me about Power Rangers Beast Morphers, especially this episode, and no spoilers in the comments below, please. I do not want the spoilers. I've already come across a few and I'm not thrilled about it, but it's, it's my own damn fault. Actually, no. No. It's the fault of whoever lets it air in other countries first. <laughs> That's whose fault it is. Anyway, I will see you guys all next week for uh, the, my next Beast Morphers episode review. How do I do YouTube? I don't remember. Um, this week, uh, on my Thursday video, if you guys want to stick around, I sell my DNA. Again, will I give it away? Uh, for money, I, I pay the money. Check out my next D DNA test, uh, where I'm not the father. Uh, biologically impossible for me to be the father, but... <sighs> took the test anyway. No, I'm just kidding. I did another DNA test to see about my genetic past, so check that out this coming Thursday. I'm very excited for it. I'm excited for you guys to see it, and I'll see you guys all next week. Bye! If you guys want to see my last Beast Morphers video, you can click right here. If you guys want to see all the Beast Morphers episode reviews I've done, which includes most of season one, all of season two thus far, go ahead and click right here. Um, they are there for you, for your binging, desires and I hope to see you guys all soon. Click here to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single one of my videos. Like this video, comment down below, and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.